I want you to look this morning in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. Thank you for being here for the second service. We had a, a good crowd for the first service as well. And uh, we last time we had all one service, we were too full and the parking lot was full. And uh, so I'd rather have as many services as it takes. Amen. And uh, man. And uh, but the Lord is in this place and we pray you have a wonderful uh, week this week. And just remember that God is up to something in your life. Amen. I said, amen. amen. And uh, first Timothy chapter two, verses three through six. I want to talk to you this morning about Easter, God's unfailing bridge. Uh, let's go to that scripture, please. And thank you to the choir Thank you, all of those that sung in the choir and the practices we had. And I do especially want to thank Brother Blue. He has been the, he has had to he has had to do so much back there. I think he stepped out. He's probably passed out. <laughs> he had to read the script, flip CDs. He had to list look at me, look at them. And then uh, those as well in the sound booth, we just thank the Lord for them and, and, uh, and all of that. And these songs that we sung this morning are Easter songs, but we're going to be singing them throughout the year uh, on different occasions. So I appreciate, uh, we had a beautiful choir, amen? I'm nice and full up here, and you can be a part of it, amen? So just let me know. At this point, it's open enrollment. You don't even have to sing, amen? Just make a joyful noise, amen? <laughs> Praise God. Easter, God's unfailing bridge. First Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Say the word Savior. Amen. Who will have all men to be saved. If you're not saved, you need to be saved. Oh, I'll just put it off. I don't know. Well, I'm a good person. You need to be saved. That's what Easter was all about. That's what the cross who will have all men to be saved. And, and that, by the way, that comes against uh, Calvinism, predestined, some he chose to save, some. The Scripture says, who will have all. What part of all don't you understand? Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Verse 5, read this out loud together. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus, verse 6, read it with me, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Easter, God's unfailing bridge. Father, thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for the music. Thank you for just the spirit, the people that have gathered today. And we give you praise for that unfailing bridge. And we'll give you the glory for it. Speak to our hearts. Anoint your servant. And everybody said amen. And turn around and tell somebody you're in the right place this morning. Amen. This past, this past week, the unthinkable happened. How many of you saw the bridge that collapsed on the news? It was shocking all. I mean, the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland, after a ship, runaway ship, crashed into it, it what amazed me is just how it just looked like it was a, just toppled. It looked like it was made of paper or paper, uh, what's those things, toothpicks. It just, just came down so easily. Fortunately, 911 was called and almost everyone was cleared. Almost everyone was cleared before it was too late. But several workers that were doing maintenance on the bridge didn't escape. In fact, there was a truck, a couple of men in the truck, and when the bridge went down, they found that truck with the two dead men inside the truck at the bottom of the river. I mean, can you imagine that? That's just unthinkable. Now, I know some who are afraid of bridges. Um, listen, if you ever travel to Atlanta, Georgia, and you have to get on that that huge bridge. It, I'm glad I'm praying through. Amen. But there are some people that have bridge phobias. They are afraid of bridge of bridges. In fact, if you go to Charleston, South Carolina, I went several years ago in a massive bridge that just when you're approaching it, you're like, oh, Lord, I'm getting closer to heaven. I can feel it. Amen. And you are. 
because of how high it's going. But what a horror it has to be to think about going across a bridge and it collapses underneath you. And I want to talk to you about that this morning as we think about Easter. Because Easter, what we mean by Easter is the death, burial, and resurrection of the only one, Jesus. It really is God's unfailing bridge. You know, in, in, in actuality, in this world, there's no such thing as an unfailing bridge. Did you know, potentially, every single bridge you drive across, potentially, that could be the moment. You know, they talked about, you know, having an unsinkable ship. And they said the Titanic is unsinkable. Reality, there is no such thing as an unsinkable ship, and there is no such thing as an unbreakable uh, uh, bridge. And uh, you could be driving over the bridge, listening to music. You could be, you could be uh, listening to my sermons on YouTube, driving and getting a blessing, and boom, there you go. Now, I know you don't listen to my sermons going across a bridge. <laughs> Most of you are on your phone. I hope you're hands-free. But uh, there you are across the bridge, and potentially it could be gone, uh, and there you would be in eternity. And so in thinking about the news this week uh, and thinking about the news of 2,000 years ago as we celebrate this day and how unpredictable life is, uh, that's what I wanted to talk to you about this Resurrection Sunday, that Easter is God's unfailing bridge uh, because on the cross God made a bridge from here to eternity, uh, not built with cranes and steel. Uh, it won't ever succumb to an accident, crash, or storm. It's on a firm foundation. You can trust it. You'll make it to the other side. Jesus is that unfailing bridge. If you've, got, if you've trusted in Jesus for him and to get you across, would you say amen this morning? I want to give you three points about this. Number one, that he is the way. Somebody say the way. Jesus is the bridge. He's the way. Go back to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. There is one God and one mediator between God and man. There's only one way to heaven. This is not a multiple choice. This is, I know we like our options. We like our restaurant options, Italian, Mexican, uh, fast food, Cracker Barrel. I thought I'd throw that in. Amen. We like options when it comes to politics and right, left, independent, clothes. Some of you bought some, Easter, some new Easter frocks, amen. And, uh, you, you know, you've got options of clothes. And what about TV? I mean, when I, was, when I was growing up, I'm 52 years old. I don't think I'm old yet. But when I was growing up, I remember three channels, 5, 9, and 11. That was it. Everything else was snowy and, and, and blurry. And think of all the options that you have on TV, sh streaming uh, channels, this channel, that channel, this plus, that plus, cable, satellite, on your phone. Uh, my friend, we are used to, as Americans, many options. And somehow that's gotten into the thinking uh, that when it comes to heaven, when it comes to eternity, well, there must be many options as well. Uh, as well. There must be many paths to God. Let me tell you something. If you're on any other path to God uh, other than Jesus Christ, uh, just like that bridge fell and the Francis Scott Key Bridge fell, uh, it's going to fail uh, because the Scripture says there is only one way. Uh, he is the bridge to heaven. He's the man. Somebody say amen this morning. Uh, he is the man, uh, and there are uh, there are no other bridges to God, uh, and uh, God is uh, has provided the perfect bridge uh, to lead us to heaven. Can you say amen? Now, there are people who own failing bridges. They're the bridges of false prophets. False prophets. If you're on a bridge, you know, the, the bridge that fell was named after Francis Scott Key. Go back to your American history. He's the one that, that was sitting in Boston Harbor as the British were bombarding uh, uh, the Americans in the War of 1812 and trying to take us back over. We, we always think of the War of Re Revolutionary War. We forget the War of 1812. They, the British got to the White House and burned it down, uh, and uh, they almost took this country back. Uh, but the bombs were bursting in the air, uh, and the flag over Fort McHenry after the, after the bombs was still waving in the, in the air. And old Francis Scott C. Old Say, can you see uh, by the dawn's early light? Uh, also proudly we wave uh, the, 
the, I forget it now. <laughs> Triumphs, Latin, brother pastor can quote Shakespeare, and I can't quote the, <laughs> the national anthem. Amen. But folks, the flag was still flying, and I'm going to tell you what, if you're on the right bridge, I don't care about the bombs of life. I don't care about COVID-19. I don't care what they do up in Hollywood or over in Washington, and the bombs will assail from hell. If you're on the, bri- on the right bridge, let me tell you, it, it, it will stand the test of time and it will stand the storms of life there's only one bridge God's unfailing bridge can you give him a hand of praise here tonight people are on the false false prophet bridge many many years ago I was pastoring here at Living Waters uh, and it was the hell bop comet was coming back in those days and the craziest dude you'd ever seen he had big eyes, skin, white hair. Come to find out he was dying of cancer. He was going to die anyway. But he got all these people convinced that they were going to... <laughs> it's funny to me. They're going to hitch, hitch, they hitch a ride on the hell bop comet. I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, you got to think about that. Uh, you know, conv- they were on the wrong bridge. <laughs> You're not going to hitch a ride with a hell bop comment. I won't tell or any other comment. Uh, there's only one. Listen, uh, don't look to the hell bop comment to get you to heaven. Uh, you look to the old rugged cross, praise God. Uh, that's God's unfailing bridge. Uh, can you say amen? Think about the false prophets. I think about David Koresh and all those children that got burned alive. And, and we think about Islam. And I, well, you're being, un, uh, being offensive. Well... If you're on a bridge, don't you want it to get you across? Do you, is it, would it have been offensive to, to put a stop to the bridge knowing the boat was about to crash into it? Thankfully, they, somebody called 911 and they shut that thing down and it happened at night. 38,000 people go across that bridge in a regular day. And I'll tell you, it would have been almost impossible had it been during the day to, to stop that traffic. Uh, and, uh, and, and you might think it's offensive, but no, it was the right thing to do to say, hey, don't go across that bridge. It's about the fall uh, and the prophet Islam. Let me tell you, and I was watching, uh, talking about TV options, Netflix has an amazing documentary on September 11th and it just unbelievable how good it was and and it hurts and I think about those those uh those terrorists who flew those planes into the World Trade Tower and here's here's what is the deal Islam says if you'll give your sons to holy war then they will make it to heaven forever if you'll give your sons to holy war and that's what those hijackers thought Their parents were celebrating them doing that. But friend, that's a failing bridge because Islam says you give your sons. God said, I'll give my son. You keep your sons. I'll give my son. And on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. And there is one way to God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Aren't you thankful for God's unfailing bridge? And then, talking about false religion, this pr- brings into point, too, uh, there are the bridges of good works. Anybody ever been on the, the, the bridge up in the mountains that's the walking bridge? The, 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 the sky, the, has anybody been on it? The swinging bridge. I, nobody's been on it, so everybody that went on it must have died. Oh, Sister Joan, you've been on it? You live to tell? The swinging bridge. Have y'all been on it? What did you think about that? It was scary. I mean, here, here you are doing it. Isn't it like a mile high? Oh, well, you have faith right there. There's people of faith in this church. But, you know, I think about good works. People say, well, I'm a good person. Really? If we could look into your mind and really read your thoughts, you're on that swinging bridge. <laughs> And your good works is not good enough. <laughs> it's not good enough. You're on a, you're on a f- failing bridge. Uh, Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3 and 23. 
For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Psalms 14 verse 2 says, The Lord looked down from heaven. Psalm 14 and 2. And to the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and any that did seek God. Verse 3. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. Uh, there is none that doeth good. No, not one. Our good works. Look at that scripture. There is no, no one. The pastor said it in the early service that Adam gave us the sin nature. We have, you don't have to teach a child to do, uh, to do wrong. You have to teach a child to do right. Amen? You have to teach them to do right. They are automatically going to do wrong. They're automatically going to kick, scream, have their own way, bite. They, they, I remember when I was a little baby, I even said some curse words because that's all I heard. Mama, <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm in trouble with my mama now. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, I heard a lot of that. <laughs> now don't look at me like that. <laughs> children do what children see. <laughs> and they say what they hear. Amen. <laughs> and uh, when I was a child, I remember going to uh, 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 the grocery store and picking up all this candy and putting it in my pocket. I was a thief. At five years old, mama, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> My sister, throw her under the bus while we're doing it. <laughs> we went to J.C. Penney one time, and she just grabbed all this jewelry, and she snuck it. She, was a, she snuck it. We got out in the car. Mama liked to die. We went back into the store, went down this long hallway, and walked into the manager's office. He had a full suit on. It was a dark room, and, and, and we sat in there, and Mama was like, I promise you, we, we didn't mean to do it, and he did not look convinced. I'm telling you, they were watching us out the door. <laughs> well, children... We are just born in sin. Amen? We are just born in sin. It kind of reminds me of a little boy that was being mean. He said a bad word, and he, he talked back to his mother, and he hit his little sister. And his mother got on him and said, said, uh, said son, what in the world? And he said, well, Mom, the devil made me do it. She said, oh, really? And he was a little ashamed, and he said, well, yes, the devil made me talk back to you. And the devil made me say the bad word. But it was my, my desire to hit my sister. Amen. That was me. <laughs> we have all sinned. And you can try to overcome that sin with giving money. You can try to overcome that sin with good deeds. You could try to put your name in some kind of char charitable foundation. And you, could, you might be a good American citizen, vote every four years. You might have, we in America, the problem is we don't realize we are sinners and we need a Savior for all have sin. And I've got good news for you. Don't you trust on that swinging bridge of your own good works? They're not good enough. God is way too too holy. God's, God's demand is high. And don't say, well, everybody else sins because when you stand before the judge, you will stand and you alone. You can't tell the judge that, well, I did it because everybody else did. No, sir. Every man will give an account. But thanks be to God, God sent his only son. And now we have a bridge, not of our good works. He died. He lived the perfect life. That's the bridge. That's God's unfailing bridge. Can you put your hands together and give him praise this morning? The good works that I do now are due because I love the Lord. If I was relying on my good works, I wouldn't make it. Amen. It's a, it's a, it's a false bridge. It's like London Bridge is falling down. If you're on your good works bridge. When I think of the big modern bridges, I think of the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. It's the second longest bridge, suspension bridge in the world. Anybody been over the Golden Gate Bridge? Raise your hand. All right. I would feel better about driving across that than that swinging bridge. Actually, the Golden Gate Bridge is a swinging bridge. You just don't know it. The Golden Gate is one and a half miles long. It took four years to build and was finished in 1937. The two steel strands used are over 80,000 miles long, enough to encircle the equator three times. All of those strands, those suspensions, those one little individual strands, 80,000 miles long, and um, it will support 200 million pounds. 
The towers, listen to this, are 746 feet high. The tallest in the world and contain enough concrete to construct a five-foot wide sidewalk from New York City to San Francisco. Those towers. Wow. That's where the confidence is. Those two big Golden Gate Bridge towers, 746 feet high. Enough concrete to pave a sidewalk from, from San Diego to New York City. Man, that gets me excited because I'm going to tell you that's a great thing. But greater than 746 feet high, greater than the concrete of this old world. On a hill was a cross called Calvary. It was lifted high. And God said, when I'll be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. I'm so glad uh, that the Golden Gate Bridge one day will fail, uh, but the Son of the Living God, that mighty cross, uh, is the unfailing bridge. Uh, he is the way. Uh, can you give him praise this morning? And then number two, uh, let's talk about the where, because uh, when you get on a bridge, you're going somewhere. Amen. <laughs> We use bridges to get us to our de destination. I said we use bridges to get us to our destination. Question, where are you going? Where are you going? Ask your neighbor, where are you going? We're all headed to eternity. I said we're all headed to it. Somebody said the word eternity. We're all, listen, there's coming a day we will be at death's door. And where will you spend eternity? Those two men... Those two men on that truck, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, two men on that truck, they didn't even hardly have time to pick up cell phone and call. They were down. More than likely, when, when they hit the water, the impact probably killed them. And, of course, when they got to the bottom, the water. And I'll tell you, they're in eternity. They were on a bridge that failed that was supposed to support them. And there's some of you that you think if, well, if I, if I meet Mr. Charming, he's going to support me. No, he's going to leave you high and dry sometimes some, if, you, if, you're in the, if you've got the wrong relationship. Here's a way to tell if it's a wrong relationship. Does Mr. Charming go to church? Does Mr. Charming pay tithes and offerings? Amen. <laughs> then, then you might have a better chance of it making it through because we're trusting on things. And I want you to know where you are this morning. You see, you, you're on a path. And are you ready to meet the Lord? If the, if the bridge goes out, if the bridge had gone, if you had been in that truck and that bridge went out, you don't even have time to pray. You better have been prayed up already. You, it, it, it behooves us to be saved now. What are you waiting for? Well, I'm waiting for, well, I don't know. i tell you what you're waiting for. You really don't think you're in danger. You really think you've got time on your side. Well, not, not if you were on that bridge the other day, you didn't have time on your side. We do not, are not promised tomorrow. And I fear that I have preached and people get gospel hardened and they, and they, so, and they so reject. The, and it is a rejection. And uh, if you're either going to trust your own self-righteousness or you're going to trust the grace of the Lord and humbly submit to His mercy and forgiveness and by His grace live for Him for the rest of your life. What, where are you this morning? Listen, I want you to be headed on the right bridge today. That's the unfailing bridge. Amen. If you're on the bridge of time... That time is going to collapse. Our bodies are fail, frail. We're just one heartbeat away from eternity. And I urge you with everything in me on this Easter Sunday, come on to God's unfailing bridge while there's still plenty of time. Amen. How long is eternity? Uh, Billy Sunday said, and many preachers have said it, imagine a little bird taking a grain of sand in its mouth, beak flying to some far distant place in the universe, and it takes him a million years, and he drops that little grain of sand there. And he flies back another million years. He gets one more grain. He goes back another million years. He leaves the second grain. And then another mil I'm saying a million years coming back, he gets the third piece. And he does it. And Billy Sunday said, 
when that little bird will have transported all of earth to that faraway place, it will just be breakfast in eternity. That's how long eternity is. And I want you to know, where are you going? There's a bridge that I'm pointing you to. It's God's unfailing bridge. And then finally, I'm closing. When, when, <laughs> when, <laughs> the decision. Jesus is the bridge. He's the way. Say amen. <laughs> Eternity is the destination. The where. Say amen. <laughs> the decision we must make. That's when and when. What are we going to thank God for 911? Thank God the bridge was cleared. Thank God that that um, that that they that people that might have been on that bridge were avoided. Can you say Amen? You see, when a bridge goes out, it's it's a nightmare. I remember living down east, and I'm closing. I remember living down east, and we I lived in uh, East Carteret County. And there was only one bridge that got you over to Moorhead City. And trust me, when you lived in East Carteret County, you needed to go to Moorhead City often. It was a 45-minute drive from my front porch to Walmart. It was a one-hour and 15-minute drive from my front porch to Jacksonville to one of my favorite restaurants. And that had to go over one bridge. If that bridge had failed... If it had failed, we would have had to go on almost an hour and a half to get over to the hospital. Thank God. They, since I left down east, they've built a nice, beautiful, modern bridge. If you go down there now, zoom, you can go right past Beaufort on a long, nice, beautiful bridge bridge. But my friend, let me tell you something. Uh, Jesus Christ uh, is the bridge that won't ever go out. Uh, Jesus Christ, you don't have to take a detour. Amen. Uh, You can access that bridge right now. Uh, You don't have to go. Listen, you don't have to. to, uh, The bridge is still standing. You don't have to go an hour and a half. You don't have to go through the pastor. You don't have to go through the priest. Uh, You don't have to give some large offering. Uh, The bridge is standing. Uh, And I'm telling you right now, now is the time. Uh, Why take that detour. Why delay it? Uh, Come on in. This is Easter Sunday. Uh, Make that decision uh, that Jesus uh, is the way and I'm going to be on the way uh, for all eternity. Can you say amen? Would you stand with me this morning? Uh, And Father, we thank you today that you are that bridge to heaven. Uh, We thank you that you're that unfailing bridge. Uh, We thank you for Easter story. And God, thank you, Lord, that that bridge uh, is going to get us from this side to the other side. Oh, I cannot wait. There's coming that day when my eyes will close in death. And I will have said my last. And I will have preached my last sermon. And it may be today. I always preach as if it was my last time preaching. And I always preach as if it might be your last time listening. This is urgent. Look at that picture up there. There's a great gulf. And if you don't get upon the bridge of Jesus, you're going to fall forever in eternity. You will be on a failing bridge. But my friend, I'm inviting you this morning. Take Take a step towards that bridge uh, and he is that unfailing bridge uh, and one day when we die I promise you uh, when death calls upon us uh, I'm going to go across the bridge of death uh, but like the psalmist said praise God uh, oh he makes a uh, he he, uh, prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy you ever seen you ever seen people eat on a bridge before (laughs) you ever seen people fishing from a bridge Uh, I'll tell you that's security amen Uh, praise God that bridge is going to get me over to the other side uh, where I'm going to meet my Savior. Would you bow your heads this morning? And Father, we just ask right now that you would search our hearts. And I pray that you would show those who are on an unfailing bridge. I pray, God, that if anybody's trusting their own good works, or if anyone is putting off the inevitable... If anybody's trying to take a detour, Lord, if anybody's on the wrong bridge of their own good works, I pray right now that they will see you the way, the truth, and the life. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you don't know the Lord today, if you're not on that bridge, 
It's just simple. You don't do good to get God. You get God to get good. Ask Him to forgive you. Flee to Him. There's safety. He will forgive you. Pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge you as the true bridge that never fails. And Jesus, I've been on the wrong bridge. And I'm in danger. But save me. By grace through faith. Say it with me. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the way. And he's my Savior. And I give him praise today. Come on, give him praise today. Hallelujah. For he is Lord. If he's your Lord and you're on the right bridge, he is Lord. He has risen from the dead and he is Oh, the bridge is open this morning. Come on to him. Amen. And every every knee Shout. Oh, I'm on that bridge. Every tongue confess. Can I say one more thing? I'm going to tell you this too. How many of you are on the bridge of Jesus? Let me see your hand. How many of you are going through a storm right now? And I mean, it's a powerful storm. It may be a storm of depression. It may be a storm of doubt. It may be a storm of fear. But if you're on that bridge, uh, praise God, you're not going to fail. Amen. Uh, Every knee shall. We're going over. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ. Sing, He is my Lord. Hallelujah. For He's my Lord. He's my Lord. He has risen from the dead. And He's my Lord. Jesus.